Hello, uh, this lecture we will study uh, biholomorphic maps as uh, orientation preserving conformal map. So, biholomorphic map as orientation preserving conformal maps. And uh, here, uh, this is a geometric point of view, which is related to differential geometry and uh, topology. So basically, uh, okay, uh, I, 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 we will discuss this just in a moment. And uh, the second topic is uh, the complex structure a Riemann sphere from uh, stereographic projection so the motivation is we want to uh, give geometric criterion of holomorphic functions. So basically, uh, so in geometry, you just forget about the uh, regularity of functions. You always assume it's uh, smooth. In differential geometry, otherwise, otherwise you cannot take a derivative. So to study Differential geometry, you need to take a derivative at least. Okay, so the criterion is that if a map pre preserves angles and uh, orientation, uh, this is uh, one of the definition for conformal, and we will show that this is the same as holomorphic. Okay, first let's uh, define or recall the angle. So let uh, first study the linear map. Uh, let T be a R linear map so that it can be defined by uh, 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, A, B, uh, C, D. So let the C be alpha, beta, eta be gamma, delta in R. Okay, then uh, in Euclidean space, Cosine theta can be defined by cos dot eta divided by cos norm times eta norm. So there will be alpha times gamma plus beta times delta divided by square root alpha square plus beta square square root gamma square plus delta square. That's the definition. Okay. Now, our first lemma is, suppose T preserves angles and uh, has positive determinant, then T cannot be arbitrary, T has a form a B negative B A and to avoid the trivial case we assume A A squared plus B squared is positive. So here A B are real numbers. Proof because uh, one zero perpendicular to the vector zero one and the T preserves angles 
then t one zero per perpendicular to t zero one, and then uh, if you plug in the formula, then you have a b c d times one zero perpendicular to a b c d times zero one and then you have a c perpendicular to b d therefore a b plus uh, a b plus c d equals uh, zero Next, uh, consider similarly. Uh, you have one, one perpendicular to one negative one. Therefore, t one zero perpendicular to t act uh, acting on one negative one. And then you compute. It. Oh, sorry here. This is one. Therefore, a plus B C plus D is perpendicular to A minus B C minus D and then you have A plus B A minus B plus C plus D C minus D is zero. You combine these two equations you have A B plus C D is zero. A square plus C square is B square plus D square. So we need to solve this, and it's you can get a uh, answer by algebraic manipulation. First, if a equals c equals d, then from the second one you get b equals d equals d. Then t is the zero map. Okay, which is a contradiction because we assume t has positive determinant. Okay, then otherwise we can assume a different from zero without loss of generality. Then B is D over A times negative C. So let D over A to be lambda, then B is negative lambda C. If you plug into uh, the second one, the green one, then you have A squared plus C squared is lambda squared C squared plus A squared. Since a, a is different from zero, you can cancel out a squared plus c squared. Then lambda is positive or negative one. So when lambda is one, t is a b negative b a. When lambda is negative one, t is a b b negative a. And uh, the first one determinant of t is a squared plus b squared, which is positive. And the second one determinant is minus a square minus b square less than zero. Okay, therefore T must be A B negative B A. Okay, ne next we verify that all the Transformation of the linear map T with the form AB minus BA preserves the uh, angles. This is because let's consider T transpose times T. So this is A squared plus B squared times. One zero zero one. Okay, then if you have a uh, vector C and a vector eta, then we can compute 
the angle between them as following as follows you just write down the matrix product matrices product okay in the above we have C T T transpose times T times eta okay then you plug in the form T transpose times T then you have the denominator have that the denominator is given by C T times eta times a squared plus b squared and the numerator is given by Cosy transpose times Cosy square root times square root a squared plus b squared times square root a eta t times eta times square root a squared plus b squared so this is eta times Cosy times eta divided by Cosy C norm times eta norm. Okay, this is the angle of C and eta. Therefore, T preserves the angles. Now we let's study the nonlinear version. Of the above lemma. So lemma two. Let omega equals f z be a smooth function. Then omega equals f z is holomorphic if and only if uh, if you if we write down the map in coordinate. with z equals x, r, y and uh, w is u plus i, v is an orientation preserving map uh, and the pulls back pulling back the Euclidean matrix matrix du square plus dv square of the target uv space to some positive function gamma x y times the Euclidean matrix dx square plus dy square of the x y domain so remark here gamma x y is known as a conformal factor remark 2 uh, we haven't defined what is metric and I'm not going to define the metric but it, for the computation you will see uh, clearly from the uh, proof that you can just view it as a product in a product Okay, so I suggest you to read the Wikipedia page. What is a metric? This is a con fundamental concept in differential geometry. So all I can see is it's a long nonlinear version of the 
inner product of the Euclidean uh, space Rn. Okay, now let's prove it. If omega equals fz is holomorphic, then we know that the Jacobian uh, matrix equals t equals partial u partial x partial u partial y partial u partial uh, partial v partial x partial v partial y equals a negative b b a so this is because of this Cauchy Riemann equation now let's look at the metric du dv du square plus dv square you can view it as inner product so du dv and then um, by the train rule what do you have so let's see du dv as we showed before this is partial u partial x partial u partial y partial v partial x partial v partial y times dx dy so this is t dx dy therefore here when you do transformation you had t transpose times t times dx dy okay and then you plug in the formula it's easy to see uh, this equals partial u partial x square plus partial v partial x square dx square plus dy square or if you write down in the real code in the complex uh, coordinate it's derivative complex derivative norm square times dx square plus dy square and uh, actually here f prime z norm square is a conformal factor Okay, on the other hand, if du square plus dv square is gamma xy dx square plus dy square, for some uh, gamma xy bigger than zero, and uh, t is partial u partial x partial u partial y partial v partial x partial v partial y the jacobian then by lemma one oh okay so uh, not by lemma one Let, let's do a little bit uh, computation again so from the above we know du square plus dv square is uh, dx dy uh, this is a, a vector with two components times 2 by 2 matrix t transpose times 2 by 2 matrix t times the column vector dx dy equals uh, for this part we also write down in a similar form then it will be dx dy gamma xy times i the identity matrix times dx dy okay we simplify it we find that this is 
t transpose t times t minus gamma x y i times dx dy equals zero. Since dx dy are arbitrary, then we have t transpose t equals gamma x y times i. Then t is angle preserving and the determinant t is positive then t has uh, the form a b negative b a at each point this is equivalent to see the cauchy riemann equation holds Okay, uh, let me ch double check why uh, Okay, so this, is, this comes from the condition that uh, omega preserves the orientation then that is to see the Jacobian uh, is greater than zero. Okay, uh, this is a general theorem about the uh, holomorphic function and uh, uh, the conformal mapping. So sometimes you may hear people uh, discuss the conformal mapping. Actually, what they are doing is uh, holomorphic functions. Uh, there's some little subtlety between this because on C it's okay you have you only have one complex structure we will discuss this later but on um, Riemann surfaces a uh, high genus for example a donut and the donut with two holes for example a donut and donut with two holes Those thing, uh, those surfaces has a continuous family of complex structures. So when you study conformal maps, you can also compare those uh, conformal structures. So sometimes it's easier to do it in the real way, just in the geometric way, without use of uh, uh, complex analysis. But it's always there. Okay, now let's discuss one of the most important Riemann surface, that's the Riemann sphere. So in, in algebraic geometry, this also denoted by a complex projective space, CP1. I don't know if we have time to discuss this, but uh, if we have uh, it's worth it to study this. Even in uh, theoretical physics, in string theory, you do a lot algebra geometry. CP1 is very important. Another name for this is rational curve. Okay, and uh, uh, topologically, it's just a sphere, S2. And in next, we will um, use stereo projection to study this. And um, from that, you can see another important concept is what is called complex manifold. And uh, manifold. What is manifold? What is complex manifold? I, I will not precisely write down the definition for this. If you have interest, you can search Wikipedia or take the uh, 
the corresponding courses. So all I have, all I want to do is give you this example and uh, give you the explicit way to write down the information, including the transformation um, maps between two covers. Okay, so first, uh, suppose we are in uh, R3, and then you have a sphere, okay, uh, let me see if we, yeah, it's a unit sphere, and then you have North Pole, and the South Pole. So for the North Pole, you can take a tangent space or a horizontal plane passing through the North Pole and you see it's tangent to the sphere. And, and we call this plane U1. And on the North Pole, you can also take a tangent plane passing through the North South Pole, and we call it U2. And before we do that, uh, before we proceed, we want to first recall the concept of a parametrization. So a parametrization of a surface, this is a material in mass uh, 234. Parametrization U1 phi 1 of S means that, uh, so here S is my bad. So S, capital S, so the dollar, dollar S. Okay, so means that there is a continuous and uh, injective map uh, phi 1 u1 to s and the corresponding concept is called a coordinate chart it is phi1 inverse which pulls back phi1 u u1 back to U1. So uh, here, uh, here dollar S is not necessary to be a sphere, just any uh, objects, any surface, and uh, probably very cold. This is your S, and probably you have a, another piece might be very uh, regular, a rectangle or whatever. This is your U1, and then you map U1, this is phi1, to continuously and uh, injectively. To some piece of S, and uh, of course we can denote this as Phi one u one the image as phi one u one and then you see for phi one is a parametrization that means your variable parametrize the point on S and the coordinate chart means you just take back take the piece on S back to some regular place. Okay, 
so there's uh, some concept. Next, we are going to uh, next we will describe a certain parameterization phi one u one to s phi two respectively phi two u two to s so here uh u one u two are tangent tangent planes dollar s is a, a sphere parameterizations based on based on the stereo per, stereographic projection okay now we um, describe this uh, sphere unit sphere by its center and um, radius so let s be a unit two sphere in R three with zero zero one half as its center and uh, zero 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 as its South Pole S and uh, zero zero one S is North Pole Capital M. Okay, now the defining equation. x squared plus y squared plus z minus one half square equals one half square or if you want to write down you can write as x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus z equals zero and if you draw a picture now for the south pole for the u2 you have this picture okay then the stereo projection from North Pole means that for any point on the sphere cap dollar s you can connect n and the point extend it until touch uh, until touch the uh, tangent plane u2 Okay, then we try to find the formula relating uh, these two points. So first, this point on the sphere, let's call it x, y, z. And then on the u2 plane, now you only have two coordinates. So let's denote by capital X, capital Y. Okay, then by trigonometrics, we do the following connecting n and s and uh, connecting s with the uh, blue po uh, the green points on u2 and uh, project the green po points on the sphere to ns so you have two uh, similar triangles so the first one is 
this wall. And the second one is this wall. These two triangles are similar. Therefore, it's easy to derive the following uh, equation x squared plus y squared divided by small x squared plus small y squared equals 1 over 1 minus. Here, the coordinate for n is 0, 0, 1. 1 minus z square and also capital x y and the small x y are in the same direction then we have lambda x y or equivalently capital x times small y equals capital y times small x you have two equations solve it it's easy to derive that Capital X is small x over 1 minus z. Capital Y is small y over 1 minus z. And the inverse map is given by uh, x equals capital X divided by capital X squared plus capital Y squared plus 1. Y is capital Y divided by capital X squared plus capital Y squared. Sorry. Capital X over capital oh. X squared plus capital Y squared plus 1. Y is capital Y over capital X squared plus capital Y squared plus 1. Z is capital X squared plus capital Y squared over X squared plus Y squared plus 1. Okay. Then, uh... The second set of transformation just give you the um, the parametrization u two phi phi two from u two to dollar s. Okay, similarly, let's set up the u one phi one u one for uh for the uh, sphere. So we first draw the sphere and passing through the north pole. We have tangent plane and uh, uh, passing through the south pole and an arbitrary point on the sphere we might draw a line extended until it intersects u1 Okay, then let's call the coordinate for uh, the blue line, blue point on U1, capital X, capital Y. And the, the green point on uh, yellow sphere, dollar S, X, Y, Z. And similarly, we can construct uh, similar triangles and set up the equation. Oh, sorry. Here we use the uh, coordinates x prime, y prime for u1. And then you have x prime square plus y prime square divided by small x squared plus small y squared is 1 over z squared and x prime times y equals y prime times x and then you have 
x prime equals x over z capital Y prime equals y over z and uh, the inverse map correspondingly is uh, x y z equals x prime over x prime square plus y prime square plus 1 y is y prime over y capital Y prime capital X prime square plus capital Y prime square plus 1 z is 1 over x prime square plus y prime square plus uh, plus 1 okay then this is our fight phi, phi 1 from u1 to dollar s is a parameterization phi 1 and then we are going to give complex structures on u1 and u2 Noted that in the above, u1 is equipped with the coordinates x prime, y prime. But actually, r2, we know that r2 is equivalent to c. Then we can we can equip equip u1 with a complex structure z prime equals x prime plus i y prime and uh, similarly u2 Capital X, capital Y can be equipped with is equipped with the complex structure Z equals X plus I Y. So the conclusion is that we have complex structures on U1 and U2. OK, another observation is we will see that phi 1 u 1 so the image of u 1 and the phi 1 union phi 2 u 2 is the whole sphere that means u 1 u 2 cover dollar s and the parameterization map maps and of course from the picture you also know that there are some overlaps between The image phi one u one. Oh, this is phi. Uh, yeah, this is u one phi one u one and the phi two u two. So phi one u one intersect phi two u two. It's non-empty. Actually, this uh, sphere missing north pole and south pole only. So what's the relation between these two complex structures? What we want to ask, what we want, what we expect. So next we introduce the concept of the complex manifold or uh, complex structure. on uh, the sphere. You, we know that originally the complex, uh, the 
the origin of the unity is the sphere. Just a sphere. It's a smooth stuff. You can take tangent plane at each point, therefore it's smooth. Or the uh, if you view it as a graph locally, the graph is given by a smooth function, so it's a smooth thing. And now we want to put some complex structure on it. What we did before is we give two parts complex structure separately. Now we want to glue them together. So we require we should glue the complex structures on U1, U2 together. So what kind of property you expect. That means we need to look at this map. So phi 2 inverse compose phi 1 and then this is from u1 intersect phi 1 inverse phi 2 u2 to u2 intersect phi 2 inverse phi 1 u1. So why this is, why this domain? So let's let's look at the abstract thing. Suppose you have surface S, and you have two parametrizations. This one and the, the green part. They might have some overlaps. And then you want to look at uh, the uh, map between the overlaps. So you, let's look at the overlap. Suppose the overlap is this one. And then you look at its image, pre-image in the uh, U1, U1 domain. So probably you have this part. And then similarly, you can look at the pre-image of this intersection. So you might have this one. So what's the good point of having uh, these two? So uh, it's easy to see. This is the domain. This domain is U1 intersect uh, phi 1 inverse phi 2 u2 uh, yeah actually you don't need to intersect because the later part is automatically in the uh, in the previous ones so this is because you Oh, I see. Uh, my bad. Here, here we should uh, write in this way. It's phi one inverse u. Sorry about that. It should be phi one u one intersect phi two u two phi. One inverse. This is phi two inverse. Phi one u one intersect phi two u two. Okay, so this domain is this domain is phi one u one intersect phi two u two. And when you pull back and phi one, you have phi one inverse phi one u one intersect phi two u two. 
and then this part is phi two inverse phi one u one intersect phi two u two. Okay, then the advantage of this we do this complicated intersection is because then there's a map between these two domains. My best. We we just look at this part, and then also here we look at this part. So there's a map between these two domains, defined by. You first map map it by phi one, and then you pull it back by phi two inverse. So that's exactly. What we did here. So we are going to consider this map. Okay. Then what do we expect? Recall that both domains are in complex plane. U one. And this is in complex plane U two. So what do we expect? We expect phi two inverse phi one is holomorphic. Then we say the complex structure st structures U one and this is a reasonable expectation. And the U two are compatible. And then then you want the complex structure C. And uh, with a complex structure C, and uh, union U two with a complex structure C here. This is Z equals capital Z equals x plus i y, i prime y prime. Z equals x plus i y. Gives a complex structure on S. On dollar s. Yeah, actually, through this fancy uh, notion, actually, we define what is manifold, what is a complex manifold. Although we uh, didn't mention that. Next, we want to check if. The above constructor, uh, complex structures are compatible, and then we need to do some computation. So from the above construction, we know that U one, uh, sorry. Phi one inverse phi one u one intersect phi two u two is u one minus uh, the north pole, which is same as puncture complex plane, and similarly for phi two inverse of the intersection is u two minus. South pole, which is also same as complex plane, and now let's write down the map. So the map from u one minus n to u two minus s is given by x prime y prime to x y.
and recall that phi one x prime y prime is mapped to x prime x prime square plus y prime square plus one and y prime over x prime square plus y prime square plus one and one over x prime square plus y prime square plus one and then if you compose it with uh, phi two inverse then you have x prime over x prime square plus y prime square plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over x prime square plus y prime square plus 1 and y prime over x prime square plus y prime square plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over x prime square plus y prime square plus 1. Uh, those combinations uh, come from the transformation law we derive uh, here and uh, here. Okay, then simplify it. We get this is x prime over x prime square plus y prime square y prime over x prime square plus y prime square and this is uh, x y therefore if you take uh, consider the Jacobian matrix partial u, partial v, partial u, partial x, partial u, v, partial x, etc. And in this setting, we are taking uh, partial x, partial x prime, partial x, partial y prime, partial y, partial x prime, partial y, partial y prime. So this is given by 1 over x prime square plus y prime square minus 2x prime square over x prime square plus y prime square square and then negative 2y prime x prime over x prime square plus y prime square uh, square and here minus 2y prime x prime x prime square plus y prime square square 1 over x prime square plus y prime square minus 2y prime square x prime square plus y prime square but then you look at it you find it has a type a negative a b b CI equation, Cauchy-Riemann equation, does not hold. Okay, then what's the problem? It looks very natural. And also from the result, you see, it's not that far away from the original one, because when we talk about uh, uh, angle preserving maps, you find you have two possibilities, either A, B, negative B, A, or A, B, B, negative A. For the second one, you just reverse the orientation. The orientation is negative. And if you look at our choice again, so this is U2, this is U1, you will find the problem. What is the problem? So because when you take x and y in U2, so x, y, oh sorry,
So the orientation, if you use right hand rule, is point upwards or point inside the ball. But now, if you look at U1, if you use X prime, Y prime as your coordinates, then you find that you have trouble. That is, the orientation, it points outside the ball. So the orientation is not compatible. Therefore, if you want to have compatible orientation or compatible complex structure, we need to take the following structure for U1. Define a complex structure on U1 as Z prime equals X prime minus I Y prime instead of Z prime equals X prime plus I Y prime. Okay, then what do you have? Then you will find if we have phi one x, uh, phi one phi two inverse compose phi one x prime y prime. Uh, you will have x prime x prime square plus y prime square y prime x prime square plus y prime square, which is x y. Okay, then Z is X plus I Y. You plug it in, you will find it's X prime plus I Y prime over X prime square plus Y prime square, which is 1 over X prime minus I Y prime, which is 1 over Z prime. So of course, this is a holomorphic function on C star. Okay, then remark from the uh, uh, Cauchy Riemann equation point of view, if we use x prime minus i y prime as a complex structure, so the CR equation in terms of x prime y prime will be partial u partial x prime equals minus partial v partial y prime and partial u partial y prime equals partial v partial x prime. So then you can directly um, test our original computation. So as a conclusion, if you use the original complex structure for u2 and uh, use the new complex structure for u1, you have a compatible complex structure. On those two complex structures are compatible, and you have a complex structure on dollar $s. So that's the complex structure defined on, uh, on the sphere. And uh, usually in algebraic geometry, we will omit the real the computation through the real analysis we will use this way. So you have two complex planes. The above one is omega, the lower one is z. So you just wrap it up. So for the z plane, you wrap it up. For the w plane, you wrap it down. Okay, then the transformation between omega and z is omega is 1 over z and uh, uh, or z is 1 over omega. So that's a transformation law. And uh, I don't know if you still remember, uh, a few lectures before, we compute uh, some residue by computing the uh, line integral along a big loop and then take a loop go to infinity. So that loop, different from the other cases, contributes 
a partial number to the residue. So from that, actually, why this is true? Actually, if you, f from this point of view, you can just uh, change the complex plane. You look at the infinity points. So this point actually is the infinity points. Infinite points. So at this infinite points, if you change the plane, you cannot, we cannot see infinite on Z plane. But we can see it on Omega plane. Okay, so in that case, that uh, calculation actually what we do is we compute the residue around the infinite points. Okay, so I will stop here. I hope you can take time to really understand this stuff. Although we we didn't do a lot of estimate out there, but the concept is really deep. Probably, um, so I would suggest you try to understand this picture or try to uh, draw it by yourself. Okay, I will stop here.